Hey everyone, thank you for uh, joining back in. Welcome to the channel if you're brand new. Uh, this channel is all about just really my journey and uh, trying to get better at brewing, distilling, and uh, all around just being a uh, learning the process of uh, home brewing and home distillation and all that good stuff. So if you're into that, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. All right, so today's video, we're doing a water experiment. What I decided to do was take five different types of water and try to uh, make meat out of them to try to determine which one gives us the best result. Water makes up 95% of the beers that we drink. Uh, how that relates to mead or honey wine, I'm not sure how much that percentage is, but it's quite a significant amount, I would say. All right, so which five waters am I using? I am using minerals, spring, distilled, tap, and filter tap. So this video is not gonna go over the result of the experiment that we're doing. This is just the introduction. The result will be in another video. So let's go over each of the five uh, topics that we're gonna, that we're using. All right, so first we're gonna talk about distilled water. Distilled water has been boiled, the evaporation has been collected, and it has been condensed down, and it is the purest form of water. Most, most brewers do not recommend using distilled water. And the reason for that is simply because it's too pure. And what I mean by too pure is there's no minerals, no additives, no, there's no nothing. And the yeast, they actually need those minerals to survive. So during this experiment, I'm predicting that the uh, mead, when it comes to, to the distilled area, is not gonna do so well. All right, mineral water. Now, the research I've done with mineral water is a bit interesting. I haven't really found a very good, clear definition of what mineral water is. I just provided a link in the description of what I think may be the most scientific way of how to describe mineral, mineral water. What I'm guessing is that the water had been distilled and then the company added mineral to it to create the flavor profile that they want and they sold it with their brand on it. That's what I think mineral water is. Now, to be honest, the research I did was not very in-depth between the difference between spring and mineral water. And really, at this point in time, I'm not really too interested in what the difference is. I think mineral water had been distilled water, and the company put minerals in there to create the flavor profile that they want. Spring water had been collected at the source and just had been treated for safe distribution and product packaging, and they just ship it out. So that's my uh, layman term of what the difference between spring and mineral water is. Now, tap water. Tap water is pretty self-explanatory. It's the water that comes out of the faucet of your home or the tap from your home. And most, peop most online sources where I have read recommend using tap water for cost and just for the convenience of it's already at your home. And now if you want to get really nerdy about it, you can contact your local water supply, buy a testing kit to where it can test the water level for you. And then the last one I think is where you actually just collect the water and you ship that out and they'll do all the testing for you. And the price on these, I'm not really sure. I didn't really look them up. But if you don't feel like doing that and you don't really want to spend the money or the time to do it, then I just recommend drinking the water yourself because the rule of thumb is if it tastes good enough to drink, it's good enough for beer. And I'm sure it's gonna be good enough for me, which is how this video started. Now, I would recommend that if you're going to just do the experiment like what I'm doing, it's just to start off small and use a small batch and try to go that route rather than creating a whole bunch of product. Now, what you don't want to happen is you don't want to have too much chlorine in your uh, water. So how do you know if you have too much chlorine in your water? Normally you'll taste some not favorable taste in your beer and I'm guessing in your meat, again, 
research on mead i haven't really found a good source at but if you know a good place to find a uh, mead then please let me know but just in case that you decided that you want to play it safe and you don't want to uh, risk putting chlorine too much chlorine in your product then you have two options that i found to be the most easiest one would just be to boil the water for 15 minutes and that should get rid of all the chlorine why this happened i believe it's uh, because the chlorine evaporates that was my understanding when i read it or two just filter the water and that brings us to our last water source which is filtered water now filter water is the exact same as tap water it's just that you filtered it out just to get some of the uh chlorine out but uh it's filtered water most people feel a lot better when they drink from filtered water so I'd recommend filtered water. I'm just using a, a Brita water filter that I have, and uh, that's the water source that I'm using. Now, I won't be going over any of the pH, hard water versus soft water, simply because it just seemed too much for me at the moment. I'm not really interested in knowing specifically what tiny little things here or there make the water or give the uh, mead or the beer its water characteristic and its water flavor. I'm just more focused on what, which of these five water tastes good. And that's all I really care about. <clears throat> you hear that noise? A lot of waiting right now. I'm not gonna put you through that. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so during this experiment, we're obviously using five uh, jars. I decided to go with a 800 milliliter jar, and, a, and I decided to do milliliters, liters, and grams, just to keep everything as accurate as I could. The honey is going to be around two. It's going to be around 425 grams each. Water leveled is going to be about 600 and. 14 or 15 grams and the yeast the yeast was hard My, the scale that i used could not go up to a gram go for the yeast i tried to use a shot glass to contain the yeast but it just didn't really want to work out so unfortunately i just had to eyeball it and i just guessed how much i distributed between the yeast for all five containers and that's really what i did and hopefully it'll all turn out and if it doesn't turn out the good thing is that i'll know that uh you need more yeast <laughs> next time so each of the jars is labeled with the appropriate water that it contains after a month from now when i decided to taste it and find the result and find the winner what i'll do is i'll just do a blind taste test all the numbers are on the bottom so there's no way i'll know and i'll just find out which one tastes the best simply by just looking underneath the bottle and that's how that will work out so it'll be a good blind taste test all right the location is just going to be in my closet that the uh that's a pretty cool environment for them to be in so that's where i'm just going to uh, use them so in conclusion in 30 days we'll actually get our uh, results back i'll actually be able to uh taste it get the video out there so we're looking about to maybe a month and a half um, just for me to take to do all the video processing editing so stay tuned for that i'm looking forward to this experiment i think the spring or the mineral water should be the best because i say most people when they drink water they're drinking it from a bottle and the most common bottled waters are mineral in spring so i'm expecting that i'm hoping that the filtered tap water tastes the best but uh that's the video hope you like it have a great day.